Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am designer Dave, and today I wanted to talk uh, in a new format. Um, I'm going to try sort of long form rants <laughs> based off of things that I feel strongly about. Um, usually I want to do educational stuff uh, with like PowerPoint presentations and, and things like that, or uh, interviews with people who I can bounce ideas off of or get more information about them. But uh, one thing I've been neglecting, and I think uh, Tim Kaine sort of inspired me to do this, is to just sort of talk about how I'm feeling about things. <laughs> and um, the recent controversies about Baldur's Gate 3, as you may have noticed in my long form rant, which I posted uh, on Patreon and uh, made public uh, for anyone to see, uh, is that the game industry has gone down a dark road <laughs> over the past, I want to say, 15 to 20 years. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, Blizzard didn't help pave this road originally, even before Bobby Kotick took over and turned it into a live services fiasco. But the it, it used to be, <clears throat> so when I started in the game industry, um, my very first days in it, uh, I had come from a generation of people who'd grown up on playing on consoles. And for console games, there were almost, I mean, there were definitely bugs, but they were super rare. They were held to such a fine standard that to find a bug in a game uh, was like, kind of gave you legendary status amongst your friends. Cheat codes being a different thing, but I'm talking about actual bugs or glitches that you could use to to get around things. Like the there was the Pokemon glitch where you could get this like broken character. Uh, I won't I won't go into that. Um, but those those were the days. So when I entered the game industry in quality assurance, I had that mentality. So I had a perfection mindset when it came to making sure that I found all the bugs and writing things up. I didn't let anything get by me. And that's why I was very good at quality assurance is because I had that high quality mindset. I want to find every bug and I want to eliminate them. And even things that I don't think are necessarily bugs per se, if they make the experience less good, I want to get the better way of it being done. And I would always suggest those things. And so a lot of my bug write-ups, which were very detailed and, you know, step one, two, three, four, five, precise as I could get it. And then I would literally try to do the bug over and over again if it was a bug. And then if it wasn't a bug, then I would just write it up as a, this is this is what I am feeling when these things happen. And, and this is how I think most players or, or <clears throat> most people would react in this situation. So that, that was the mindset. So now I get into game development and we worked on Warcraft 3. And uh, I'm not saying that we didn't hold to those same same standards the we had qa and we worked to make as an ex excellent a product as possible but when it came time to ship when we got to the gold master part we locked aside the campaign so the campaign couldn't change anymore but we were still making changes for a zero day patch meaning before the game even got to the store we were patching bugs and stuff and they were going to be in that first patch. And I think that mentality has been detrimental uh, to the game industry. It's like, did we need to ship that month? I mean, in some ways, yes, because you're pressing CDs and DVDs and everything. You, those things need to happen on time. Um, the, the manufacturing of the of the physical boxes that all has to align and, and happen in the in the correct amount of time. And if you have any press stuff that's ready to go, like the bigger the operation becomes, the more important all these things aligning in time becomes. And as a result, you start <clears throat> the edges of quality start fraying. And unfortunately, it was that zero day patch mentality, I think, that led to games as a service sort of becoming the standard. It's like, we have all these people here to fix bugs anyways. Why don't we create additional stuff that also generates money for us? Skins, additional content. Keep getting more money out of the people after we've shipped the game. <clears throat> so 
that mentality definitely increased over the years. And we've seen that in a number of games. In fact, every game has become a live service game at some point or has attempted it or they were all attempting it at the same time. And what they ended up doing was crowding out the market because if everyone's a live service game and there's a finite amount of players for all of these games and one live service game captures the attention of the majority of the audience, what happens to the other ones that were relying on capturing some of that audience in order to maintain the high production values of continuing to generate content forever? And the answer is they die <clears throat> or they get canceled and then studios get crushed. And what's sad about that, and, and I really want you th to think about like, what were, what would these studios have been creating if they were not doing that live service game? And were these studios that wanted to create live service games? Was this a studio that had in the past created a live service game? And I think what you'll find if you look at several of them is that they were not and that the people who were working there had come in because that studio was known for making a good box product, a product they shipped, and then it's out in the world, and maybe they do some patches, but then they're moving on to the next thing. And <clears throat> we've seen a number of studios fall recently that I think are related to this, this problem, because the talent leaves, and then who are you left with, you know? Um, but if they hadn't been making those live service games, could they have shipped a high quality AAA game, a finite game, a boxed product, the beginning, middle, and end of high quality in that time frame? Absolutely. So we as a game industry are robbing ourselves of these things that would potentially make the game industry better. And Baldur's Gate 3 is the prime example that I'm going to point to for what should be done, what was done in the past, and what could be done by these companies that are chasing the money and losing the entire purpose of why we make games in the first place. So what Baldur's Gate 3 did was they had a bunch of really passionate people who really wanted to make this type of game, and they let them do it. <laughs> they let them do it. Yes, the D&D license matters a little bit, but I mean, they already made this type of game with uh, with uh, Divinity Original Sin one and two, and now they were just being able to use the D and D license to like go hog wild and do a, a successor game to the Baldur's Gate series, which is a beloved franchise, albeit quite old um, by modern standards, <clears throat> and update it. And to me, the game is a homage or a love letter to Dragon Age Origins, which is. Another company, Bioware, that basically was brilliant at making these cool story games with the beginning, middle, and end, these ep novels, effectively. Like, there's three novels in the Mass Effect series, and the third one kind of <laughs> Fs up at the end. And then we won't even get into Andromeda. But then being forced to do a live service game like Anthem, then what happens? It all falls apart. All the creatives left. Like... What, what the hell were you thinking? Um, and it's just funny because now all these big studios that are so into live service games are looking at Baldur's Gate 3 and going, no, 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 pay no attention to that. That's not how it's done. That Those are special circumstances. They're not. They're not special circumstances. The only thing special about Baldur's Gate 3 is the love and care that went into making it. And the reason that that love and care went into it is because those developers who are creatives got to put their creative energy into something they love. And it's, it's really that simple. So can we return to this style of making games? I know we can, the people who are passionate about these types of games, there are, they're everywhere. And, and the question is, will these big studios let them do that? I don't know. Microsoft definitely has let in exile, for example, work on their passion projects and it is i think paying off for them i think wasteland 3 was an amazing game and uh uh hey in exile i'd lo uh, love to do some writing with you guys again uh let me know um and i think that there are plenty of studios that have these passionate developers within them that could form into teams and then create these products if they could just stop trying to force everything into a live service model 
So I haven't done my 2023 year in games. I, I may just delay till 2024 and then like for New Year's do a, a, a retrospective on everything. But I've already done the 2019, I think it was 2021, where I did those videos about it. And if you look back at them, there's nothing to change <laughs> because the there's still it's still exactly what's going on and it's still the same. The only thing I can say is that Baldur's Gate 3 is this wedge, this wedge that might have like cracked the door open and everyone was like, oh yeah, that's how games used to be. Like that's how we used to do it. Like it used to be a passion project. We used to love what we were creating and all these players are responding to it and the sales are gangbusters as a result. Why aren't we doing that? Right? <clears throat> well, some, some are, uh, Stormgate is definitely making a game that they love that, and everyone there is very passionate about RTS games. So we'll see something there. There's other RTS games that are being made at the same time that are also passion projects that are also beloved passion projects. So this next two years will be very interesting. We will not necessarily see the results of the Baldur's Gate 3 wedge breaking through the live services shenanigans that we've been dealing with for so long. But I think after these next two years, we'll start to see room. <clears throat> we'll start to see rumors and games that are in development that are very much in that same vein. That's my hope. And if not, then uh, I'll just have to find a way to make them myself or something. Because I really want to work on an RPG before I die, uh, like a big grandiose RPG in the same vein as Baldur's Gate 3, though not necessarily with that license or in that world. We'll see if I ever get that opportunity. Um, but anyways, thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you appreciate this. <laughs> mini rant if you like this type of content let me know if you prefer i go back to uh more refined like with the powerpoint and everything and going over like the the processes and, and the systems and things like that just let me know i'll do more of those too uh and uh if i don't see you later good afternoon good evening and good night